Food was hard to come by in Somalia, long before the current famine. These civilians living near Mogadishu's airport are being fed by a Somalian non-governmental organization. As always in Mogadishu, there are guards and guns. We're feeding the people every morning and at lunchtime. They come from all around the city. We feed between 2,000 and 5,000 people a day. We think there will be even more next month. Somalia, the easternmost nation in the Horn of Africa, is a devastated country. Somalia has been engulfed in chaos and civil war for over 20 years. Its capital, Mogadishu, has been a haven for armed gangs, Islamic militants, and pirates. It's impossible to know how many citizens Mogadishu has. Civilians have fled by the thousands over the last few years, many to refugee camps, both within Somalia and in neighboring countries. Things weren't always this way in Mogadishu. Before being transformed into a battlefield, it was called the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. It was a commercial center and a tourist destination with a luxury hotel. But that pearl has long been just a memory. This is the cathedral, which looks, this is the tolerance of the city was here. This is the place, the city hall, the symbol of the government. And now it's just like this, and I hope that the world will see this and then say, okay, now something has to be done for Mogadishu. Somalia first burst into the consciousness of many Americans in 1993, when a mission by the U.S. military turned into the bloody Black Hawk Down incident, in which hundreds of Somalis and 18 GIs were killed. Shortly afterward, the United States and the United Nations withdrew from Somalia. For a time, it seemed the world turned its back on the country. After 1993, which was a traumatic experience for many uh, international organizations, uh, but particularly uh, for international peacekeeping, uh, that Somalia got put in the too difficult to, uh, to deal with box. Uh, uh, and so it's not... <laughs> People are aware of Somalia, but don't know how to, how to address it. Civil war continued with factions fighting factions until 2006. Then, for a brief time, much of the country was united under the rule of the Islamic Courts Union. A group of Somali Islamists whose militant wing came to be known as Al-Shabaab. The rule was harsh, but there was a lull in the fighting. The streets became crowded again. The beaches, too. Then, in the summer of 2006, troops from neighboring Ethiopia dislodged the militants and propped up the Somalian government. But 
By 2009, the Ethiopians were gone, leaving al-Shabaab to take over much of the southern half of the country. The Shabaab's tactics were crude and cruel. Inhabitants of a captured town would be forced to submit to the Shabaab's version of Sharia law. Those who resisted could be brutally punished. Al-Shabaab has also carried out a murderous attack in nearby Uganda and threatened the U.S. We have major ties with anyone who's Muslim. We have the same goals. We'll go against all those who go against Islam, even if it takes capturing the White House. In recent years, al-Shabaab has vied for power in Mogadishu with the army of the transitional federal government, the TFG, supported by militia fighters. The TFG has the support of the international community and the peacekeeping troops of the African Union. But there has been little peace in Mogadishu. On this morning in May 2010, the Shababs took over a building. The government army, the militia, and the African Union were having trouble dislodging them. Later that month, a militia leader known as Commander Abdu is shot down in the street. A paramilitary group well known here, the Ahul Sunnah, supports the government. <laughs> Its fighters say they hope for a better future for Somalia. I hope my country will be free and at peace again one day, and recognized by the whole world. I wish my people would have a better life in the future. And if I die fighting, I hope my brothers, the Mujahideen behind me, will continue the struggle. <laughs> the militiamen fighting al-Shabaab know they may not live to see that future. I'm old. We have people here who don't respect our humanity, nationality and religion, and it's inevitable that I may be killed. I'm happy to be fighting here. <laughs> In April 2010, the Shababs forbade Somali radio stations from playing music. Oh, it came another. They've also attacked the stations themselves. They always shoot at these two antennas. Also, this is a mortar. Mort this mortar hit here before two months. It, they were. They were, they were targeting the radio, it, the studio itself. The Shababs have also threatened the lives of journalists, even very young ones. But that hasn't stopped 17-year-old journalist Nishad Bashir from speaking out against them on government-sponsored Radio Mogadishu. People must be informed. Even if I'm only a young girl, it's my duty to work here and get involved in politics to help my people resist the Shababs. When this was shot in 2010, she was living in the Ministry of Information with other radio journalists, protected by African Union troops. I left my home six months ago. I can only contact my family by phone. I can't see them because the Shababs are threatening me. I got you, 
The women here have many problems with the Shababs. They force them to marry foreign fighters from Afghanistan or Pakistan. They force them to marry with no dowry for their family. Recently, there were three cases of women being raped in Mogadishu. I've never known peace. I was born after the destruction of the country. When I was in school, there was a period of calm. But the fighting started again, and I couldn't go every day. So I began to work here. I've been working here at this radio for three years. Bashir has worked here so long that the threats no longer appear to phase her. They call me all the time. They constantly threaten to kill me. They say my work is against Islam. But I don't care. The people must know the truth. That's what's most important. In early August 2011, Al-Shabaab, which has been blamed for the severity of Somalia's food crisis, pulled out of Mogadishu. The group called it a tactical retreat. The government now controls the city, if it can be said that a city facing famine is under control. <laughs> 